Okay, we will discuss now, we will continue our discussion, <coughs> excuse me, we will continue our discussion about single sideband modulation which we started yesterday. So, if you recollect what we said was that we do not have to transmit both sidebands as we do in DSBSC or DSB AM, right? Because information about the baseband message signal is available in any one of the two sidebands. So, we could decide to cut off either the lower sideband or the upper sideband, right? And the basic advantage that we will achieve by doing so would be increased bandwidth efficiency, right? And also power efficiency, we will be transmitting less power, right? So, uh, well, well, basically, power, power efficiency is secondary, main thing is the bandwidth efficiency. So, just to recapitulate once again. In terms of the frequency domain, if this represents the spectrum of your message signal, you these are the two sidebands of the normal AM signal shown here in dotted lines, right. So, this is the normal DSBSC spectrum, right. What we are saying is we can remove one of the two side bands. For example, we could remove the upper side band, right, and transmit only the lower side band. So, we are transmitting this, this will of course come along with that, right. So, this is around F sub C and this will be around minus F sub C. So, this portion of the spectrum is being filtered out at the transmitter. You generate from here to the DSP, first generate the DSPSC <coughs> signal and then by a suitable sideband filter like we discussed yesterday, you go through the normal modulation process first and through a suitable sideband filter eliminate one of the two sidebands. If you eliminate the upper sideband, you are transmitting the lower sideband and this for eliminating the upper sideband, you can use a low pass filter or a band pass filter whose pass band is from FC to FC minus P, right. If you want the, if you want to transmit the upper sideband, you have to use a high pass filter or a band pass filter whose transfer function is uh, non-zero between FC to FC plus P, right. So, that is what a side, that is how you will choose a sideband filter. And like we discussed, the reconstruction is possible by the same process that we have for the DSPSC signal. So, here is your SSB signal coming in, right. So, this is your SSB spectrum, this is the SSB signal in time domain. You again multiply with the carrier and pass it through a low pass filter just like what you are doing for the case of DSPSC, right. In the frequency domain, what basically we are saying is that as a result of this multiplication, the same frequency translation is happening again. This part of the spectrum will come here, right, and this part of the spectrum will go here, and because of the symmetry, it will be precisely the same MF that we started with, right. So, of course, there will also be translation around 2FC and minus 2FC, but that will be eliminated by the low pass filter. So, the reconstruction process in the time domain as well as in the frequency domain uh, follow the same principle that we had for the case of DSPSC, the double sideband suppressed carrier modulation, right. Now, so far so good, but suppose, uh, let us look at, some, so, okay, before I come to that, what are the advantages that we mentioned of doing this? The main advantage is power uh, bandwidth efficiency. Your transmission bandwidth B sub T is now not equal to 2B, which was the case for the two previous modulations we discussed, but simply equal to B. So, in the same bandwidth, now you can tra transmit twice as many messages as, so you can transmit two messages in the same bandwidth rather than in the 2B around FC rather than a single message, okay. That is the main advantage. How, what is the power that will be transmitted in the SSP signal? 
what was the power that was being transmitted in the DSBOC signal if you re remember the expression it was S sub C into S sub M which was the carrier power into the message power. So in this case how much will it be divided by 2 because you are removing one of the side bands right okay. Let us discuss briefly the issue of practical realization of the SSP waveform. The practical realization would require that you have a suitable set. The additional thing that you require on top of what you do in DSPSC is this sideband filter right. Now this is a non-trivial operation that you want to do. This is what you need to understand. You require a sideband filter with almost ideal characteristics. Suppose you decide to retain the lower sideband right. So what kind of uh, transfer function should the filter have? Let us say you do it through a low pass filter right. So what kind of transfer function would the low pass filter have? It should have this kind of a transfer function right. It should have a perfect transmission up to the carrier frequency FC right and a zero transmission immediately after that and you know that such an ideal low pass filter is almost impossible to realize, very very difficult to realize. In practice of course you will not realize a low, uh, low pass filter, you realize a band pass filter which will have this transfer function but it will also be associated with the same difficulties right. One can approximate such filters, basically you require what are called high Q tuned filters right. You require because typically these carrier frequencies are very high right and this bandwidth will be a very very small fraction of the carrier frequency. So a narrow band high Q tuned filter will do the job right. You, you understand the quality factor of a tuned circuit right. Quality factor determines how much bandwidth you have around FC. The larger the quality factor the, uh, the, lower, the, uh, the lower the bandwidth right. A large quality factor a high Q filter will, will, will mean a very sharply tuned filter right. For ideal tuned filter the Q is infinity. But as Q becomes finite, as it becomes smaller and smaller, the bandwidth increases, right. So you require a Q of a suitable value and typically because of the fact that you require very sharp cutoff, you require fairly high Q filters, right. You require very high Q filters and designing high Q filters, high quality factor tune filters using conventional passive components like inductors and capacitors is extremely difficult right. They, they would be typically very large order filters and remember no matter what you do how um, ideally you construct your inductors and capacitors they will be losses right. There will be losses due to the um, uh, resistance of the inductor or um, various kinds of losses in the capacitor right and these losses is what reduces the quality factor. If you do not have these losses you can have the ideal tune filter but because these are their losses uh, the, the frequency response gets flattened and you do not get a very sharp Q filter. On the other hand there are devices, there are materials uh, which enable the, the realization of these high Q filters right. For example I will just mention the name here for your information. You could use what are called piezoelectric crystals or rather piezoelectricity is not important here. So I think I should remove this, this thing quartz crystals is the more appropriate point. You can use quartz crystals right and interestingly they have some very, very useful electrical characteristics and they can be used in the resonant circuits of uh, tuned circuits to provide you very sharp frequency response right. So you could get the kind of filters that you want to design for the SSP generation by using quartz crystals. So you will use quartz crystals in the band pass filter of the for, for side band filtering. More about this later if we get the time.
at the moment I just want to mention this fact because I do not want to get into a discussion on how quartz crystals work in this connection. Yes, please. Right. Sir, but the thing is, we still are transmitting in that region. We just are removing it via at the receiver via a filter. Suitable no, filter. no, no. This sideband filter is at the transmitter. This is the transmitter. We are we are putting the sideband filter before transmission. Right? Please uh, understand that. At the receiver, I'm doing exactly what I was doing for the DSBSC signal. The receiver is no longer not, not different at all. That if, if that was another case, then there would be no advantage. So this is the transmitter, right? So you are putting the sideband filter at the transmitter. Please understand that. Okay. So one can use this specially designed, properly designed uh, quartz filters, quartz crystals crystal filters which have this very interesting properties of providing you very sharp cutoff or very high Q uh, characteristics, okay. But uh, we will discuss more about that later if the time permits. Now before we proceed further, let me ask you a question. Suppose I ask you, tell me what will this waveform look like in time domain? Can I write a mathematical expression for this waveform in the time domain? The answer is not that easy anymore, right because I can write the expression here that is simply the product of these two waveforms but what is the kind of waveform I have after this single sideband filtering is not so obvious. Now we will take that uh, we will take that up as a uh, as the next job to do and when we do that we will find that once we have this mathematical expression it also provides us another method of it also gives us another method of generating SSP signals. Yes please. Anyway, we cannot transmit any anything between that Fc mi um, minus b and Fc plus b because if we uh, transmit anything between that, when we actually frequency translate it back, when we demodulate it, then it will uh, interfere with the two. Between Fc minus b and two? Fc plus b. So what I what is the question? Sir, we can't transmit anything during this in this in, interval. In this in this we cannot talk, we are saying that we are gaining on the bandwidth, we are bandwidth. Yes, because I am using the bandwidth from Fc to Fc minus B. No sir, if we use something, uh, if, if we put in something like uh, an impulse. I FC. could, let me, uh, let me clarify your doubt. I think the question is, can I use this bandwidth or not? Can I use this message bandwidth or not? Yes, yes of course I can. I can put another message in this bandwidth. Suppose, in fact, this is when I discuss frequency division multiplexing with you later, we will see that this is precisely what you do. These are the, these are the advantages that you derive from SSP. You can put different messages, each of them occupying only a bandwidth of B close to each other, right, adjacent to each other. I can put one message here, another message here, a third message on this side, a fourth message on this side and so on and so forth. I can put them side by side at a spacing of only B hertz. There are methods to do that, right? And I can do that precisely because each of these messages requires only B hertz, right? So that is the advantage of SSP. And if I, if, if there is an application, we should use that advantage, right? Otherwise, what's the point? If I'm not going to use it, then what's the point? Of course, the whole idea of saving it is to use it somewhere else. So, but in this case, if we use it, there, there is actually. Uh, an interference between the wave uh, in the frequency domain between the time. Uh, How there is an interference? I am eliminating this from this message. So I am putting another message in that spectrum. We are transmitting something else from uh, Fc to Fc plus B. So yes. Think, so where is the interference? So then the, uh, when we translate it, then the two waveforms will uh, Obviously at the receiver, you will have to separate them out. Okay. I understand your doubt now. At the receiver, if I see. You want, what is the idea? Idea is to be able to share the same physical medium, right, in terms of bandwidth. So that you do by putting multiple <coughs> signals in different adjacent bands. Obviously at the receiver, you must make sure that you demodulate only the right signal for you. 
right? You will have to do a separation, corresponding separation filtering at the receiver so that you only see one message signal at a time, right? Otherwise, they will obviously interfere. I hope that answers your question. All those things will become clear as you proceed. But these are these are questions that you must ask, and so that things get clarified. So let's return to the uh, issue that I just raised, and that is uh, representation. of single sideband uh, signals, okay. So let me start a fresh on a fresh page and let me draw a few diagrams so that we can work with these diagrams. I want to write an expression for the SSP waveform in the time domain, but to do so, I will start with the frequency domain because SSP signal is very easy to understand in the frequency domain, not so easy to understand in the time domain, right. So let me start from where it is easy to understand, right. And let us say as we know, we can generate an SSP signal by um, starting with a DSPSC signal, right, and then low pass filtering the, so I must multiply the message waveform, a message spectrum which looks like this with let us say the transfer function of an ideal low pass filter which looks like this and that will give me the lower sideband signal, right. So this will generate so this is x dsb in the frequency domain the corresponding x ssp spectrum would therefore look like this i'm so right after this low pass filtering so this is the process through which the ssp waveform is generated in the frequency domain multiplication of the DSPSC spectrum with the transfer function of this kind of an ideal low pass filter, right. So now let us look at this ideal low pass filter. I can represent this ideal low pass filter as the sum of two signal functions. This is minus FC, this is plus FC. Can, I, can you see that? I can represent this rectangular function which specifies the ideal low pass filter as the sum of a function like that, right. And a function like that. This is, if you were to express this uh, in math mathematically in terms of the signal function, how will you write this? Signum of, where is the signum function uh, located here? Minus, minus FC. So this will be signum of <coughs> F plus FC, right? And this will be correspondingly <coughs> signum minus signum of F minus FC. If I add up these two functions, right. Uh, of course, let us say take the amplitude as half so that after addition this will give you 1 here, right. So this will give you a, uh, a filter, the ideal low pass filter that you are looking for with a transfer function value equal to 1 between minus FC to plus FC and 0 below minus FC and 0 above plus FC, right. So if you add up these two functions like this, I, I get this. I am doing this just to do some simple manipulations so that I can write down the corresponding expression in the time domain, right. Okay. So it is clear that I can write this spectrum as the product of this DSBSC spectrum with this function plus with this function, 
because that will be equivalent to the product of this with the ideal low pass function. So, let me put it down more clearly. So, what we are let me first write this mathematically. What we are saying is that the ideal low pass filter H this should be H sub L F is equal to half of signum F plus F C minus signum F minus F C right. So, this is basically what I am saying this transfer function is a sum of these two yes please. When we are making the amplitude half here then why we are taking half and F C it is because this half is there that I am so this is half sigma f this is my half right I am adding these two functions and getting this function that is all I am saying right. So and your what is the expression for the DSP spectrum that is half AC m f plus f c plus m f minus f c right. So, what are you doing? You are multiplying this spectrum with this transfer function to produce your SSP output agreed. If I multiply this transfer function with the DSPSC spectrum which is this I will get my SSP spectrum. So, therefore, my expression for the SSP spectrum in the frequency domain can be now written in a closed form. It will have how many terms? You are multiplying two terms in one expression and two terms in another expression, you will get four terms, and these four terms will be 1 by 4 AC. So, uh, maybe you can, it is can you see is it visible both, both these terms? Okay, so we can manage with that. Um, so, if I multiply this first with m f plus f c, you will get signum f plus f minus or plus m f minus f c. So, I am taking these two terms and multiplying with this signum f plus f c plus um, minus 1 by 4 A C M F plus F C into signum F minus F C. Please check it out that I am doing things right plus M F minus F C into signum F minus F C right. These are the four terms you will get. Okay. Any questions on this? Now, if you look at it carefully, I can collect these terms into two groups. Is there a term corresponding to just M F plus F C alone? Which one is this? this term or which one? Suppose I call this A, call this B, call this C, call this D. Is there one of these terms equal to M F plus F C? It will be hmm? this term C you see this is minus half M F plus F C into sigma f minus a, minus half sigma f, f minus f c is plus 1 uh, right. So, this term this is the term c right. Similarly, can you identify a term which corresponds to m f minus f c? Hmm? 
right. So, that is this term right and the other two terms now you have deliberately collected these two terms first because this together will be the same si double side band spectrum that I started with plus the other two terms which you can write. So, we are taking care of C and we are taking care of B the two terms which are left are plus 1 by 4 A C M F plus F C signum F plus F C and which is the other term left minus M F minus F C that is. So, this is the term A and this last term is the term D signum F minus F C. Okay. So, please look at it carefully and see that is okay with you. Basically what we are saying is that this term look at this M F plus F C is which that is this this component right M F sorry this is your M F plus F C part right that when multiplied with this part you will produce this portion of the spectrum right. So, sorry so sorry what we are saying is this multiplied with minus half sigma f minus f c during this in this entire interval this function is plus 1 right. So, this into this will be this itself that is all we are saying. Sim, so, that is the term C right is that clear similarly the term B M F minus F C is this part this into this function at this region would be again this itself which is M F minus F C. So, these two terms one can take out and combine them I put them together like this and the remaining two terms are here the term A and the term D okay. So, I will explain that again. So, if that is fine we proceed further okay. Uh, so, now look at the first two terms we know that those first two terms will correspond to can you give me the time domain expression for the first two terms the sum of the these two terms. What is the corresponding time function? Half A C M T cosine omega C T right. This is a DSPSC signal that is all. So, this is half A C M T cosine omega C T right. So, this is nothing but 1 by 4 A C in the frequency domain M F plus F C plus M F minus F C. However, what the second two terms will amount to is not very clear right now right. What will be this part of the function is not very clear. So, let us try to understand this part. This part is clear in the time domain okay. So, now let us start with this. This is where the Hilbert transform comes comes in very handy. Remember Hilbert transform is defined in terms of the signal function in the frequency domain and we are having signal functions here. So, there is a relevance here of the Hilbert transform use of Hilbert transform. To start with recall that in the frequency domain this is the same as minus j signal f into m of f right. The inverse square transform would be nothing but the Hilbert transform of mt you multiply the spectrum of mt with minus the with the function minus j sigma f in the frequency domain and the that's nothing but the hilbert transform of mt right so we start from here now also to collect the basic frequency translation theorem suppose you multiply mt with e to the power plus minus j2 pi fct right what is the corresponding frequency domain relation 
when it is empty plus e to the power plus j two pi f c t, this will be f minus f c. When it is minus, it will be f plus f c. So this is f plus minus plus f sub c. Right? This is your basic frequency translation theorem. Similarly, now if I look at m hat t e to plus minus j two pi f sub c t. Now can you tell me what will this be equal to? Hmm? Given that m hat t has this Fourier transform, or first uh, le let us talk about the frequency translation. This will produce the same spectrum around if it is uh, plus here around minus, right. So this will give you minus j m f minus plus f sub c into signum of f minus plus f sub c, right. Basically the same spectrum on which this frequency translation theorem is applied, right. So now keeping these three basic results in mind, let us look at the inverse Fourier transform of the last two terms in this expression. What do, what do they correspond to? So if I look at the inverse Fourier transform of the terms 1 by 4 AC into M F plus F sub, sub C into signum F plus F sub C minus M F minus F sub C signum F minus F sub C which is the last two terms. Now please tell me term by term what do they correspond to? What can I say about this term Look, looking at these relations? Can I say that this is minus A sub C which, which result will be applicable? This one right divided into 1 by 4 J right. This 1 by j will come because I do not I do not have minus j here, so, right. So uh, 1 by 4 j into m hat t e to the power minus j 2 pi f sub c t, right. And what about this term now? Same thing plus a sub c 1 by 4 j into m hat t plus, plus j 2 pi f c right. Are you all with me? So now if I combine these two terms what do you get? Take m hat t outside as a common factor you are left with e to the power j 2 pi f c t minus e to the power minus j 2 pi f c t divided by 2 j right. So this is nothing but let me raise it slightly so that you can see it properly half of a sub c what will it be equal to m hat t into sin 2 pi f c t. So I have a closed form expression for the inverse Fourier transform of the last two terms. The first two terms were equal to half a c m t cosine omega c t and the last two terms are equal to half a c m hat t sin 2 pi f c t. Very interesting. So that gives me a closed form mathematical expression for the SSB signal, the single sideband signal in terms of the message and the carrier just like we had for the DSPC signal and that is equal to half AC MT cosine omega CT plus half AC MT M hat T sine omega CT right, a very neat and interesting expression.
any questions i hope you have followed the derivation it is fairly straightforward basically makes use of the properties of the fourier transform and the properties of the hilbert transform right and what kind of a ssb signal is it it is it is a lower side band signal right now it's a very simple exercise for you to go through the whole process again and show that if instead of plus here i have minus here you will get the upper side band signal okay so it's a very uh, interesting and useful expression mathematical closed form expression for um, the ssb waveform it's not easy to visualize this waveform because to visualize this waveform in you can you not only have to visualize this plus uh, but also you have to visualize this now if for arbitrary signal one doesn't know what m hat t will look like for certain kind of signals one can work it out for example for cosine omega mt i can say that hilbert transform is sin omega mt right but for an arbitrary waveform very difficult to see what the hilbert transform will look like right so in general it's very difficult to visualize it but for specific kind of waveforms it may be easy to do so now this representation so this is the representation that i was talking about mathematical representation of ssp signals this representation leads to a second method of generating ssp waveforms right that's called the phasing method and it basically implements this equation that is all right. So, what do you what you need is you start with a message waveform empty and you want to generate this waveform you just go through the uh, terms of this equation. So, you have two branches empty you have a carrier component cosine omega c t right and that is one branch. In the lower branch before you do this multiplication you have to do a Hilbert transformation which is what it is a 90 degree minus 90 degree phase shifter for all the frequencies present in MT right and that is followed by a second product modulator in which the carrier is sin omega C T and you simply add up these two to produce your lower sideband signal right. If you subtract one from the other you will get the upper sideband signal. So, looks very neat and very simple right. The requirement of so th this is the second method and the first method you required high q tune filters around the carrier frequency to remove one of the side bands right. In this method it looks very simple but actually that the difficulty still remains the difficulty has been passed on from realization of a high q band pass filter to an ideal Hilbert transformer right. Remember an ideal Hilbert transformer will have to effect a 90 degree phase shift a minus 90 degree phase shift for each and every frequency component in the bandwidth of the message signal right starting from f equal to 0 to whatever is the bandwidth to f equal to b right. But that is also such an ideal Hilbert transformer is also not easy to realize right. However, since the whole operation has to be done around base band right this Hilbert transformer is operating on the base band signal it is much easier to approximate such a Hilbert transformer than uh, to, to realize the high q tune filter that is required for SSP filtering. Both the methods are used in practice this one as well as the uh, sideband filtering method right. Both have their pros and cons but this gives you an alternative right. So, this is 
one a second way of generating the uh, SSP waveform which is called the phasing method. Basically we call it the phasing method because this requires the implementation of a 90 degree phase shifter. They require a 90 degree phase shifter not at a single frequency realizing a 90 degree phase shifter at one frequency is a very trivial job you can you can think of a very simple circuit consisting of only R resistance and capacitance to do that right in fact ideal capacitance would produce a 90 degree phase shift right uh, but to realize it for a band of frequencies is not so easy right over the entire band same constant 90 degree phase shift okay. So that is about the SSP waveform representation and its generation. Obviously uh, we have already talked about demodulation of SSP waveform to some extent right but I like to come back to this issue. The demodulator that I have discussed so far at the beginning of uh, today's class and also mentioned earlier, what kind of a demodulator is that? What do we call it? A synchronous or coherent demodulator, right? Which would require us to have a local carrier in phase synchronism and frequency synchronism with the carrier of the incoming signal, right? So, one demodulation process is the coherent demodulation that we already discussed. So this we already discussed. Let us consider what will happen in this case when it is not coherent. We remember we did this carry out this discussion for the case of DSPSA signal and we understood that due to a phase offset the signal will be attenuated right and due to a frequency offset we will see the so called wobbling effect right. The further modulation of the modulation of the received signal in time message signal in time sometimes sometimes it will amplitude will go up and sometimes it will come down. The rate of this depending on delta f the frequency offset between the transmitter and the receiver carriers right. What will be the case in SSP let us look at that right. So let us look at the effect of if suppose you are using a coherent demodulator but there is a phase incoherence what will be the effect. So to do that now we have the mathematical tools to handle it we know that I can represent the SSP waveform like this right. This is the expression for the SSP waveform with a plus sign for the lower sideband and a minus sign if I want the upper sideband so either of these two is fine. In the coherent demodulator you will take the this SSP signal and multiply it with cosine omega ct right that is what the coherent demodulator does and pass it through a low pass filter. <coughs> For convenience let us multiply it with 4 cosine omega ct so that this vector of half and uh, of the trigonometric fu functions go away and let us also include a phase offset. In fact let me consider this as a time varying phase offset which actually can model both phase offset as well as frequency offset right. The frequency offset for example is a time varying phase, phase offset right. So a more general expression is right omega ct which should have been the true carrier frequency plus theta of t which, which models both the phase offset as well as frequency offset right okay. So if I do this exercise multiply these two pass it through the low pass filter it is a very simple trigonometric exercise I would like you to do that yourself and you will see that the detector or demodulator output now after low pass filtering reduces to this expression. Okay. simple trigonometry and removing the 2 omega c terms 
when you multiply these two oh there is something missing here no one has pointed out this should be here there is a sin omega ct here and there is a sin omega ct here right. So, you are multiplying these two removing the two omega c terms and seeing what is left right this is what you will have that is the result. If theta t is 0 that is there is no frequency in phase offset your demodulated output will be same as empty which is what you want right. If you have a perfect synchronism perfect coherence output will be equal to empty the required output but when theta t is not equal to 0 so in this case you will get a perfect replica of empty of message when theta t is not equal to 0 you have a problem you have a highly distorted signal right you not only have something the effect that we observed in the DSPSC but to that you are adding something else the second component and this will be this will lead to a highly distorted signal right. So that shows that if I use a coherent demodulator for demodulating SSP signals such a demodulator will be even more sensitive to frequency and phase offsets than the DSPSC demodulation using the same demodulator right. So, that is something that you have to keep in mind. Now fortunately it is possible to effect this demodulation with better tolerance to phase and frequency offset uh, which can be of course moved man by manual tuning by another method which we shall discuss next time. Thank you. <coughs>